you're actually going to be surprised with this testing result. I never usually tell anyone in the beginning of the video, but it's it it's it's unbelievable how this thing tested. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new ESC from Hollybro. Now this is called the Hollybro Tico 32 F3 Slim ESC. Now as the name states, it is rocking an F3 microcontroller unit, which is a lot faster than the Cortex M0s and the BB2 chips found on the BL Heli 32 and as well as the BL Heli S. Now this is the top of the line and this is where ESCs are going. Just like how most people are switching over to F7 flight controllers, uh, this is what we're going to be seeing very soon is F3 ESCs. They've worked out all the bugs and everything's running pretty damn smooth. And what's so cool about the F3 microcontroller units is you can get away with using less components, even less filtration, because it runs so much better, so much efficient, and it does its calculations perfect because of the amount of the processing power that the microcontroller units have. Now, this will even fix some of the issues that some of you might know and some of you might not know about, which is some BL Heli 32 ESCs cannot run 6S low KV motors above 800 KV, which is something some people have figured out the hard way and some people just still don't know anything about. However, this will safeguard you from that. Not only that, they run smoother, hell of a lot better, and um, you're actually going to be surprised with this test result. I never usually tell anyone in the beginning of the video, but it's, it, it's, it's unbelievable how this thing tested. So let's continue on here. So if we take a look at the top and we also take a look at the current sensor. Now let's start with the current sensor here. This is a shunt resistor. Now if you can tell it looks different than most shunt resistors we've seen. And the reason for that is this is because this is a low resistance shunt resistor and you want low resistance. And why do you want low resistance? Well, because when you have higher resistance, the current flow gets limited because it's resisting that current flow. So the lower resistance, the better. So we have better current flow, better power delivery, less heat, and just more efficiency. So that's one huge plus. Also, if you take a look at the MOSFETs, they have these square metal little pieces. This is because it's kind of like an inbuilt heatsink, if you might say. It has overall better cooling, even though you didn't add a heatsink. But obviously, if you do add a heatsink, it's going to perform even better and you're going to get better power delivery. Now, if we take a look at the top pads, you might think there's a telemetry, ground, and the signal. Well, you're actually wrong here. You, we don't have a ground, but what we do have is we have LED. So it's LED signal here. So you can control, I think. I'm sure possibly just one LED so they didn't incorporate it onto the PCB itself but they've left you the output for it if you wanted to have some kind of LED somewhere you can totally do that I won't be using that but someone might find it useful the other pad over is telemetry so you have telemetry broken out for you right there so you can easily access it and also we have our signal pad right there which is what's going to be telling this how to run now this is capable of i think d shot 2400 and as well as pro shot and some other crazy cool things because it's running a hell of a fast microcontroller unit if we flip it over here we see we have six capacitors which is usually somewhat scary because filtration would be considered as somewhat minimal but again because this is an f3 it's going to surprise the living shit out of you. Let's just jump to it.
All right, guys, so the results are in, and let's take a look at it. So on the left here, we have the throttle noise level test. This gives us the noise at each throttle level. We have 10%, 25%, 50%, 75 and 100% throttle. Both of these are exactly the same. This is just a colored version to tell you where the voltage is at most of the time. And on the right here, we have simulated aggressive flight just to see how well the noise is being filtered out through the ESC in a very aggressive flight. So both of these are exactly the same again. And on the bottom, we have just the colored version just to tell us where the voltage is at most of the time. Now, when you look at this, what you want to see is um, the lines be as flat as possible. That means it's the cleanest because when you see something like this, this is the voltage fluctuating up and down. And that is the noise that you see in the video feed and that affects the other components. However, in this ESC, this is an absolutely remarkable test not just because of its size i mean its size is a huge factor i mean this is a slim baby tiny micro esc basically it's just it's insane how it's performing here and let's put that into perspective now i think that's what we should do so let's go ahead and start with you know what i'm going to bring in a tico 32 just the older one the, just the blh 32 not the f3 and that was the best esc that i have tested till this day so let's bring it in we're going to bring it up top here so that's the throttle and that is the noise right here. So the top is the Tico 32. This is the new one that we just tested, which is the F3 Slim, the Tico 32 F3 Slim. And uh, as you can tell here, that the Tico 32 beats it in in the filtration in the throttle noise level test. It has it's just loaded with capacitors. But if you watch the FPV video feed, you can tell that these were basically just identical. They were just a draw between these two. And this is not a bad result, by the way. This is a good result. Just comparing it to the best, you might think that way. No, this is a hell of a result, actually. And again, for the size, it's it's just out of this world. I, I just can't believe it here. And if we take a look on the right here, we have the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. It's performing almost as good as a Tico 32. If you had just a small, maybe even a 50 microfarad, low ESR capacitor do those F3 ESCs it'll perform as a Tico 32 and this is an almost perfect result which is just spectacular here um let's bring in something else here's a slim ESC for example the DYS Aria slim it's even bigger okay than the F3 slim here and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the throttle let's take a look at the throttle here this tested uh, not, 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 not as good as I'd like it to and yeah as you can tell there's not as good as this is this is just yeah you can see that for yourself um here at the dys aria up top on simulated aggressive flight maneuvers we got a maximum voltage spike of 28.2 volts and the minimum voltage drop was 6.8 volts and if we take a look at the f3 slim esc from hollybro it's a uh, voltage spike was 20.8 volts so the full battery is 16.8 so a 4 volt kind of 5 volts voltage spike is basically it's less than 5 volts because each square up is 5 volts as you can tell it didn't even have a voltage spike above 5 volts which is just remarkable that is something you really want to see and if you take if you take a look at the device aria here we had an over 10 volt voltage spike from the from the you know the base point of our voltage and uh yeah you, the, there, there's a huge difference i mean you can see that for yourself and um yeah and the, the slim obviously wins here all right so we're also now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring in the best budget esc and just to see how well this compares to the best budget esc and these are slightly bigger also don't forget these are all bigger and they have more filtration on board as you can tell here's the best budget esc now as you can tell in the thr throttle noise level tests they're about identical and if we take a look to the right here we see again that the tico 32 f3 slim is an absolute beast and you can tell exactly what the motor is doing here as you can tell so this is basically there was no throttle or like 10 percent throttle Boom, 100% throttle. Here, maybe around 75% throttle. And then it just went back up. It, the, the red, you want to see the red as thin as possible. And you kind of don't want to see as much green, purple, or blue. You just want to see just that red line, just like this. This is just just beauty, basically. This is what you want to see. And um, yeah, this is one of the tests here. And again, the FETs are nowhere near as capable as the FETs on the Hollybro F3 Slim. And don't forget, it's also rated for a 6S. Now here's a really terrible ESC just to give you an idea of what a bad ESC looks like. There we go. Right here. Can you tell what the motor is doing? Well, maybe kind of somewhat. This is the it was called the Solo Good ESC. And this is something you you really don't want to see. It's really terrible. And you can you can kind of put in perspective the level this ESC is at for it's just a, it's a tiny package and to have this amount of performance 
is um, something quite amazing actually. These F3 ESCs are, I think are going to be the way to go right now because they obviously, this is not the first time I've tested F3 ESCs. I actually have a couple I've been testing and um, every update they actually get a little bit better, which is uh, kind of, it's, it's remarkable actually. It's, it's something really good to see here. And um, let's bring in something else. For example, I'm going to bring in the T-Motor F55 Amp 4-in-1 ESC. That one was, it's considered on one of the best 4-in-1 ESCs currently. And uh, I'm just going to bring it in just to get a, you know, just an idea of uh, the performance of this F3 Slim ESC also. So up here is the T-Motor F45 Amp 4-in-1 ESC. I don't know, was it the 45 or 55 Amp? Sorry, the 55 Amp. Let me find that one. It's right here. Okay, so here it is. There we go. So this is the T-Motor F55 Amp 4-in-1 ESC. And as you can tell, the F3 Slim beats it. And it's using, and the, the T-Motor F55 Amp is rated for exactly the same thing. However, it even has more filtration on board. Can you tell the difference now? Does it even make sense? This is why this is so freaking remarkable here. And um, well, overall, it's a hell of an ESC. It'll reduce weight quite dramatically, especially on tight builds and even small builds. And if you wanted a beast of an ESC for a little micro, then not even a micro. It's actually meant for like big 5-inch, 6-inch quadcopters. Uh, you can go ahead and jump on it. So far, it is looking great and it's performing absolutely phenomenal. And expect a 6S test within two weeks promised on this ESC. However, and again, any ESC you use 6S setup, it's highly recommended to use low ESR capacitor. I will try it without low ESR capacitor and also with low ESR capacitor so we can also see a 6S test here. So overall, this is a really great ESC and uh, currently it has two thumbs up here from the bench testing. The real world testing will be upcoming. However, I'm stacked up with snow and I'm unable to fly. I haven't been able to fly for the past week, I think now. And um, it's going to be a couple more days till I'm able to fly. But overall on bench testing, it is performing remarkably good for the package, the size, and just about everything. And it's something to be expected with the price as well. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If I did help you make a purchase or avoid a purchase, please consider using the links down below and or contributing to my Patreon. That really supports the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.